Do you consider yourself a media junkie? Do you crave access to all of your TV shows, your homemade videos, anywhere you go? Or better yet, do you just simply find Netflix content just a little lacking? Well, in today's bit, part one, I'm going to go through some of the options that you have, and I'm going to tell you why I think that might be a good fit for you. Stay tuned. You may have heard of these big name players in the media server game before, XBMC, Plex, both of which have their uses, but to me, Plex has always come out ahead. Now, I'm not here to give you a sales pitch, but what I'm gonna do is go through some of the things that I found through my experience that pretty much made me a loyal Plexer. The first thing I had to look at when setting up a media server was how easy it was to set up. Plex was a no-brainer. Within five minutes, you can have Plex up and running. You can do something similar with XBMC with the same amount of time, However, it takes a little bit, sometimes a lot of bit more time just to get it perfect and work into your needs. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but for now I want to focus on simplicity. Well, this rolls right into the second part, compatibility. Now, both systems can run on just about any platform, but they're by far equals. Let's say, for example, you want to watch a movie on your iPad while you're at lunch, or you want to gift a Roku to a family member so they could see the home videos that you make instantaneously. Well, this is where you're going to see the big differences between XBMC and Plex. It's about how easy it is to use on multiple platforms and how well you can go from one system to another without any kind of big hiccups. XBMC is meant to be a highly configurable media server hosted on your network and accessed through the same network through a service called DLNA. Now, XBMC has a lot of options. You can customize it through themes. You have lots of different configurations and plugins that you can add to XBMC that makes it better. Plex runs off of the same system, except they don't have as many configurations as XBMC does. Now, with Plex, the major difference is that Plex actually connects to a remote Plex server, and it uses that to manage your login credentials. These login credentials helps you connect to other devices, things like your iPad at work or the Roku at your family members. This direct communication with the server is what gives you cross-platform compatibility. Not to mention that it handles some of the communications from those clients when you're accessing your personal media server from outside of the network to be able to tell it what to transcode to. I'll get a little bit more on that later. With XBMC, you can view your content on or off the network anytime that you want to. However, when you're off your network, things get a little difficult. With XBMC, you sometimes need root access to whatever device that you're, you're trying to connect with to install the program manually. Sometimes you have to set up manual port forwarding through your router or you have to do some crazy configurations either server side or client side just to get it to work. That's where the differences come in. With Plex, all you do is go to your favorite app store, download the app, let it do its install, and then you just log in. The Plex main server holds those credentials and knows where your media server is, as long as it's running, of course. And if you ever want to view your content, you'll be able to browse your content from anywhere you are, as long as you have internet access, using those credentials through Plex, and you can see everything. You don't have to have set, it, set up any kind of special port forwarding. You don't have to do any kind of crazy configurations. Plex pretty much just handles everything. That's the beauty of Plex. It runs off the same XBMC platform, gives you a lot of the same options, but just makes everything really, really simple. I think that's why I prefer it the most. Now let's talk about compatibility. Who's to say that the DVR that you're using to record those TV shows that you want to host later are going to be compatible with any other device you want to watch it on? Or who's to say that the phone or tablet that you're using to record those home videos are compatible with any other phone that you might be watching it on later? Or that Roku that you gave to your family member? Well, that's where transcoding comes into play. Transcoding is a method of finding the optimal video format that the client requests and transcoding it on the fly or converting it on the fly to allow that client to play it back flawlessly. Transcoding is directly supported with Plex. It comes set up by default. You don't have to do anything crazy. You can change a few things, but right out of the box, it's gonna work. XBMC, on the other hand, I've heard you got some options that you can get it to set up right, but it's a little bit more complicated. And if you can get it working at all, it might not work nearly as smoothly as what Plex would work. Simply put, Plex just knows what client needs what and it makes it work. Simple. Okay, so in this example, I'm gonna show you my Xbox One. Now the Plex application for the Xbox One is actually still only in its preview phase. So it's still got a few bugs to it, but even with those bugs, it works pretty good. So I'm gonna show you some of the different features and how the graphic user interface works. Bear in mind though, I usually use my media server for things like homemade movies 
or TV shows that I record off of a DVR. So I was forced to kind of add some demonstration media just to show you what it would look like if you had this media in your library. So let's go ahead and get started. Xbox, go to Plex. Select five. Play. Let me ask you a question, Chris. Would you be surprised if I told you that the Navy has credited you with over 160 kills? Xbox, pause. Now, for this example, all I have is a trailer. I don't actually have the movie, but it'll give you a good idea how the interface works and how well some of the voice controls work, too. Xbox, play. So the best way to look at it is if you want a system that's powerful, easy to use, and works on many if not all of your devices, Plex is the way to go. It's fast, it's simple, and it's compatible with just about anything. If you crave a challenge, however, or you don't need to access your media off-site, or maybe you really enjoy customization and you're willing to put up with the hassle, XBMC might be a perfect fit. Personally though, I go for simplicity. So if you like the sound of Plex, this sounds like something maybe you want to get into, please click like and subscribe below. This is part one. Part two of this series, I'm going to go through some of the basics you'll need to get your own Plex media server set up and running. And then I'm even going to touch base on a few advanced options that you can either look at in the beginning of the process or after you get a little bit more comfortable with what you're doing. As always, if you like this video, please like it, subscribe below, and thank you for watching.